quiet in here. Let's try that one more time. I said it means to purge, to purify you from the guilt and the condemnation of your past sin. But my Lord, somebody ought to have been done taking a loop around here. Come on, somebody. We've been purged from our old sins. Our past sins are gone. Glory to God. And we have been purged so we can serve the living God. We can serve the living God with a conscience that's clean. Glory to God. And see, it's all because of what he did for me at Calvary. My faith in his finished work guarantees that. It's already been provided for me, you see. It's already been given. Everything that God did on the cross of Calvary, when he said it was finished, he said it was finished. And everything has been laid on the table for whosoever will. He's not trying to withhold anything from you. He's laid all his benefits right up there. And it's up for you to grab them. I know a lot of us, as we became Christians, a lot of us, we had, we had to fight through that, that condemnation phase. We had, to, we had to fight through that guilt phase that we were walking in. And some of us still do. Some of us are still walking in it. Some of us think, well, I, 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 I kicked the cat and I cussed the dog this week, and I, I'm just not worthy to go into the house of God this week. God don't see it like that. God looks at one thing. He's looking at where your heart is. And if your heart is looking at what he did for you, and God says he's clean. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I said, God says he, he's clean, glory to God. He's justified. He is sanctified, glory to God. He can come on in to my presence now. He can come on into my house. That's what that word purge means. We've been purged from the sin and the guilt that we used to carry around. And listen, the, the fruit and, a, and an effect of the conscience being purged is a true service to God. True service, when we're purged, when we realize we're purged and we're guilt-free, that brings forth true service to God. I'm talking about a liberty to serve God. I'm talking about a confidence to serve God. We, we're confident about what we believe here in this ministry. Why? Because we've been taught properly. We've been taught it's the cross plus nothing else. You can't add to it. You can't take away from this message. I said you can't add to it and you can't take away from this message. The moment you do that, you are trying to say to the Lord, well, what you did at the cross just wasn't good enough for me. I got to help you. When you try to add to something he did, you see, we've been purged. We don't have to worry about the guilt in the old life that, 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 be, that besought us. Mm. Purged from a dead work. What is a dead work, Pastor? Are you ready? Buckle your seatbelt. Well, a dead work can be a sermon about another Jesus. It can be a sermon of somebody wanting to be seen of men. It can be, well, you're bowing your head in prayer time, but... You're really not praying. It's getting a little bit quiet in here now. But it's the truth. A dead work can be that religious thing, you see. That religious thing we do when we, when we, when we walk in with the Lord and we say, well, I'm just going to act like I'm praying here and nobody will notice. That's not the way to serve God. Why even come to church if you've got that mindset? Why even bother putting on a religious mask? You ain't fooling God. You can't fool God. God looks at the heart. At least Christianity is a condition of the heart. Where is your faith at? And when your faith is in what he did at Calvary, glory to God, he says, purge. He says, clean. Now he can come on into my presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That is good news. How many of you read the scripture before, but it's never really inspired you? It's just words on a page. It's because faith has been placed somewhere else, you see. It, it becomes a dead work. It's just you reading words off of a page. How many has ever felt that before? Everybody raise your hand. Whoever didn't raise your hand, you're lying right now. 
We've all been in that place to where we've struggled and where we've thought, well, God, I just don't feel the Lord right now. I don't know what it is. And listen, you're going to go through seasons like that in, in your Christian experience. But your job is to just keep looking to the cross of Calvary because sometimes you're going to be in, a, in, a, in the trial of your faith. And God is waiting to see if you're going to keep going or not. And he already knows if you're going to keep going or not, but he's going to let you see it. So once we are born again, we've got to understand that God has given us an unction from the Holy One immediately that has purged us from a dead work, that has purged us from religiosity. In Christendom, when we begin to serve the Lord, a lot of us there, we've got to go over some valleys. We've got to go down through some hills. We've got, God's got to work some things out of our heart. That's the sanctification process that, that Pastor Curtis has been teaching and preaching on so rightly. That we need to keep walking. We need to keep allowing the Lord. We've got to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and say, Not my will, but thy will be done, Lord. Not my will, but thy will be done, O God. Oh, it's important to realize that we have to just lay it all down for him and present our body a living sacrifice and say, Lord, I can't fix this, but you can. Anytime we think that we can do a religious work, we're heading the wrong way. You, first, you've got to understand that you're disqualified. First, you've got to understand that this is not me, that he doesn't need my help. Singers and musicians, he doesn't need your help. Preachers, he doesn't need your help. Listen, all God needs is an empty vessel that'll say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Glory to God. Just an empty vessel. Somebody that's been purged and realizes that their faith remains in Calvary, that they can't add anything to themselves. How many know our conscience when he says that we are to be that our conscience has been purged. Listen, that's past tense. That's something that happened when you got born again. But a lot of times our mind goes back and it drifts back and, and we, we get these thoughts that the devil throws these little fiery darts and, and, and listen, he, all he has to do is usually throw one of them. And then we take that thought and we'll run with it. And then he's laughing the whole time. But we, real, we realize that the Bible is telling us this is in past tense. He's already purged you. It's finished. He's already purged you from dead works. Therefore, there's no reason to walk around putting on a religious mask. We're going on with Jesus, church. Hallelujah. There's no reverse gear in faith. Faith goes forward. I said faith goes forward. And see, our conscience, a lot of times, it'll lie to us. It's not, it's not a very reliable source to serve God. That's why everything that is, has to be and needs to be done in our Christian experience, it has to be brought out by his power. It has to be brought out by his spirit. Are you with me this morning? We can't take credit for anything. Jesus said, without me you can do no thing. Nothing means nothing. Literally nothing. And that's, listen, this is how God gets all the glory. The glory don't belong to a man. Remember when Jesus in the Gospels, he was talking about those that, that the, the publican and the sinner came, and, and he says, the publican says, well, Lord, I, I pray, uh, I fast twice a week, and I give tithes to all I pray. And then Jesus looks over there at the poor sinner, and he says, this guy's just asking, Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, help me down here. You see, that's the heart that Jesus is looking for, a, a heart that's surrendered unto him, a heart that's, and so our conscience is not a reliable source. When he said it was purged, we got to understand it's purged. It's done, it's done, it's done. Then the Holy Spirit, what he does, he takes residence up in us, and he begins to say, don't look at that. He begins to say, don't watch that. He begins to say, don't go in there. You see, he's a heavenly father. How many times did your father, when you were growing up, your earthly father say, don't do that. Stop going in there. Don't be looking at that. Boy, if you love your children, you'll tell them that. 
If you don't love them, you'll just let them run wild. Hey, Amen. Our, our children, let me just say this this morning, they've forgotten what a belt is. They don't even know a lot of them what a belt is. Y'all don't start throwing stuff at me. But that's the truth. If we had a little more of this action going on in the house, this nation would be a little bit better place to live right now. I'm just telling the truth this morning. You see, we've been purged. What we need is the blood of Jesus Christ to come along and purge us from our sins. We don't serve a dead God. We serve the God of a living, and we have been purged so we can bring forth living works. Not a dead work. I'm talking about a living work. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Not a dead work. I'm talking about a living work. Something where God gets all the glory. Where you realize it wasn't you and you, you couldn't do anything. I bring forth a living work unto him. In Hebrews 1 and 3, the Bible says, let's turn over there. Hebrews 1 and 3. Hallelujah. How many are getting something this morning? I hope you came here to get something. Lord, purge us from dead works. Glory to God. Amen. Hebrews 1. Let's just pick it up in verse 1 right there. God, who at sundry times in divers' manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by his Son. How does God speak to us? God don't speak to anybody any other way than by his son. I just read it to you right there. And his son is attached to what he did. And you can't separate the two. Once you separate Jesus from the cross, you have another one. Paul told us there was another one, didn't he? He said, there's another Jesus out there, another gospel out there. And he says, I'm really surprised that you've been removed from him. I remember one of the sisters and I were talking this morning about the, the very elect, even the very elect that, that would be deceived. And she asked me what I thought. That, I, that's you and I. Who's the very elect that could be deceived? That's everybody. That's everybody that takes their eyes off the prize. The prize is Calvary. Glory to God. He speaks to us by his son, who he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> in the beginning was the word, and the word was in the beginning. Who was the word? By him the worlds were made. And everything this word, this word holds everything in store. The scientists today, they don't even know, they don't even understand how a, a positive proton and a negative neutron stay together. They can't even figure that out. It's held together by the word. That's the truth. Check me out. Hallelujah. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image. Now watch this. Of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. By himself, he purged our sins. It's almost offensive for us to walk around as Christians going, well, I guess he just hadn't forgiven me of this one. I've done it too much. His blood works, saints. It, not sometimes, it works every time. Go to, glory to God. He says, by his power he had purged. By himself he purged them. He didn't need nobody's help. The law wasn't needed to purge us from our sins. It was just needed to show us what we were. He purged our sins, and then he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You see, when Christ said it was finished, he said, that's it. I'm going to go sit down now. 
and he's still on the throne right now. Sitting right there with nail scars in his hands. Why? He didn't say he was finished when he raised from the dead, did he? Although that was proof that he died. Although that was proof that he died. But he said it was finished when his blood poured out. He said it was finished when he died on the cross. Glory to God. He didn't need anything else. Glory to God. He didn't listen. The earth didn't quake when he raised from the dead. Did you notice that? And the veil in the temple didn't rip when he was raised from the dead. But when he died on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. That's where I was purged. That's where I was bought, glory to God. That's where I was forgiven. My Lord, I'm forgiven this morning. You're forgiven this morning. I don't have to walk around in guilt and condemnation anymore. He's taken it all away. He's washed it. He's purged it. And if you don't believe he's purged it, then you're going to be walking around in dead works. dead works just wearing that religious mask it's just going through the motions and and listen i understand i know how it is sometimes we come in here and and, and we've got prayer on monday and we've got church on wednesday and and things can get kind of mundane and, and and repetitive can't they and sometimes you feel like you're producing a dead work but see that's when we go back to where victory was won when that thought comes we go back to the cross. We retreat back to the victory side. And listen, it's always there. He's, he, God is not hiding the cross from us somewhere. He's not putting it out of sight where you can't see it. You're the one that's left it. You, you're the one that's left it if you're walking around in dead works. Because this thing works, glory to God. I said this thing works. This thing, what we have works, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anytime you go back to the victory side of the cross, he's going to pour out his spirit because he sees faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The victory side. We, got, we should be bold. Bold. Bold Christians, man. That's what God's looking for, somebody to stand up. Listen, there ain't much time left. There ain't much time left to go around telling people about Jesus. Everybody you run into at the Walmart, you ought to be telling them about Jesus. Glory to God. Invite them to church, praise the Lord. Tell them I know where there's a good church at. Well, we got some cross-eyed people preaching this gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. I want to flip over there. Hebrews 10, 19 through 23. My Lord, we serve a loving, faithful God this morning. He's purged us. He's forgiven us, and he's washed it all away. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of that. We can come into the boldness. Hebrews 10, 19 through 23, he says this. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Having therefore, brethren, he's speaking to you. He's speaking to you, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus. So he, he's given us a way to come enter in boldly right here. But he said it was through the blood of Jesus. Lord, I prayed five hours this week. I can come on in now. That's a dead work. God sees that as a dead work. That's not a living work. A living work is something that has been, you've been empowered, you see. You, you've, he's been given you provision. He's empowered you for service. Lord, I gave 50% of my income this week. That's a dead work. It says right here, we come boldly in by the blood. And I love that word boldness that's there. That lets us know I don't have to knock when I go in my father's house. I just open the door and I come on in. It's my father's house, glory to God. I'm not worried about knocking on the door. You don't ever knock on the door when you go in your father's house, do you? 
You just walk on in. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, Dad, I'm coming on in. Here's what I need now. I need more of your spirit to go back into that earth and tell people about Jesus. He told us that we can't do anything without him. By the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. That new and living way is what he did at Calvary. It's a new and living way. What was the old and living way? Well, that was let's go grab a sacrifice. And, and let's go take it to the priest and let's see if he accepts it. Because we're not sure if he's even going to accept it or not. What a miserable. I wouldn't have wanted to live pre-Calvary. I don't know about you. But the beauty of it is God's plan back then, they just didn't know it was the same as it is today. Abraham was justified before or after the law. Last time I checked, it was before the law was given. It's always been by faith. So those that lived before the cross, they looked forward to it. And now that us, we look back to it. You see, it's that center point in history that everything rotates off of. And you can't get away from it. Glory to God. It's a new and living way. Now watch what he says here, which he have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. <laughs> My Lord. Through the veil that is to say his flesh. Remember the middle wall of partition that Paul talked about? It's been broken down. Whenever we look at that tabernacle plan that, that Moses made, and I'm all over the place this morning, but that's okay. That tabernacle plan that, that God gave Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 25, that thing was given dimensions, it was given heights, it was given material. It was a perfect blueprint of what God wanted them to build. And then there was a place inside there where no man could go, only the high priest once a year, and it was called the Holy of Holies. And a veil separated that place to where that man could go in once a year and the outside where they would do the service of the tabernacle. No man could go in there, and when he did go in there, he couldn't go without blood. And when he went in there, they sprinkled blood over everything. And see, it's a picture, it was a type, and it was a shadow. And when Christ died on the cross and said it was finished, the Bible records that that veil, that is to say, his flesh... It ripped in two, signifying that every believer can now come in. Every believer can now come on into that holy of holies. Glory to God. You, do, you, do you realize where you live when you wake up, believer? You're in Christ. You're living in the holy of holies. Know you not, you are the temple of the living God. And you've been purged. From dead works. Purged from dead works. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. That's exclusive faith, what he's talking about there. In full assurance of faith, meaning all my reliance. All my trust, all my confidence, everything. I'm laying it all down to him. Got a problem, Jesus? Can't pay my light bill, Jesus? My car's broke down, Jesus? My baby's sick, Lord, Jesus? Now let's go to the doctor. Are you with me this morning? Full assurance of faith. Whatever problem and situation you've got, you might think you've got it in control in life, but let me tell you something, you don't. I don't care what it is you're doing, whether it's on your job working or, or whatever it is, coming, whatever you're doing here in this ministry, you need the Lord's help. That way, it's not being looked at as a dead work. It's a living work. Why? Because you serve a living God. 
and his salvation plan, unfortunately, it only works one way. It's, it's not working many ways as the church would, would try to lie to us today, most of the modern church would. It's not working many ways. It's working one way. God sees exclusive faith in his son and what he did at Calvary, and then he releases his power. And you're empowered to be a living sacrifice. You can't be a living sacrifice without his help. Oh, you say, well, Lord, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. No, he's, he's the one making you die. <laughs> he's the one that's bringing about a death in your body. A death to what? A death to self. Self's that problem, man. Self's that problem we all got. And we realize, well, all we can do is just say, Lord, take this self. It's yours. And realize it was crucified on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago and go on with Jesus and let him begin to produce a living work through you. He says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. There it is right there. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You see, Paul was speaking, and I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, but he was speaking in a, in a realm to where these Jewish believers could understand him. Because they, listen, Israel, that, it, it was about the sacrifice with them. They were instructed and so he's writing to them, and he, they understood the word sprinkled. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that promised. You know, Luke 174, it says this, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Do you know how much of the body of Christ today walks around serving the Lord in fear? But it's God's will that you serve him without fear. Now, it's good to have a good, healthy fear of the Lord because that'll keep you going the right way when your flesh wants to take you the wrong way. Now, God's given us those. Fear him that can cast you into what? Fear him that has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. But God doesn't want us walking around in fear. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? In fear of him. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Glory to God. In holiness and in righteousness, he goes on to say before him, all the days of your life. So we're to serve God how? In holiness and in righteousness. And that has to be a work that only God can produce in you. That has to be something that is empowered in you. That's the Holy Spirit working. That is the sanctification process. You've been empowered by him. And he's bringing about living works. Living works, glory to God. How many know there's a purpose for God's grace in your life? That's what causes the whole, <laughs> the whole Christian experience to keep rolling. I, 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 I'm mesmerized sometimes when I think about the, the, the multitude of the population of Christianity today that think you just once saved, always saved. Last time I checked, I was fighting for this faith. And it was a good fight. It was a wonderful fight. It's a fight I'm going to keep fighting. It's a fight I'm going to keep fighting to believe. We've got to stay determined. Got to stay determined not to know anything else. Let's look at Titus, if we will. Titus 2, 11 through 14. Titus 2, 11 through 14. It says this, For the grace of God that bring us salvation have appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, 
we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, we've been dealing with this subject right here. We've been talking about sanctification here recently in the ministry. And listen, it's been enlightening for me. I don't know about you. And that's what the Holy Spirit should be doing in us. But he says right here that we should live how? Righteously and godly in this present world. Now, once again, we've got to go back to Calvary before that can happen. That's not going to happen by you trying to willpower it in. You're saying, well, I've been walking for God. I've been living for God for 20 years. Man, I'm walking this thing. You got the wrong mindset. You're about to fail. You're about to shipwreck because you've forgotten the power source. And the power source has been made available to each one of us through faith in Calvary. And so when we come to God and we say, oh, Lord, and, and listen, he gives you that desire to want to live righteous. Listen, before you were born again, you didn't have any regard for God's righteousness. Not a one of us. Didn't care how many times I said this or that. Or who, how many times I offended him or them. <laughs> we didn't care. But see, what God does is he empowers us to live godly and righteously in this world. Listen, why would Jesus say you are the light of the world? You're a You're a light. You, you've been set up on a hill so people can see you. So you're not to live like the rest of the world lives. So much of Christianity goes walking through the world today, dragging Jesus' name right through the mud. Are you with me this morning? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Hey, you want to go to the bar and have a beer? Yeah, sure, let's go. That's that mindset. That's rotten. That's a dead work. You're dragging the Lord's name right through the mud. Listen, Christians are different. If there's not something different about us, God help us, man. That means none of this thing is real. That means that let's throw away the Bible because it's not real. But Jesus, what he does, he comes on the inside and he changes you. He's changing something on the inside. Hallelujah. I don't look like I did yesterday. That's the process. God has made provision for me to where I don't have to look at the old me. I should be making, being made new on a daily basis. If God's not correcting you on a daily basis, then examine your faith. <coughs> and ask yourself, is my faith in the cross? Because I, I'm not hearing the correction of the Lord. My Bible says that he loves those he chastises. Every son whom he receiveth, he chastiseth. God, God's in the correction business. And, and see, we need to allow that. It's not a very comfortable thing, but we need to allow that. We need to go ahead and say, Lord, I'm going to the cross. Go ahead. Just be easy. I've said that before, I ain't gonna lie. I know how rough it can get. <laughs> Lord, be gentle, please. <laughs> but I don't want to walk around with a religious mask on either. I don't want to walk around producing dead works for the Lord. That's no witness. I want to produce a living work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Lord, help us. How many know the Bible demands for repentance in two separate areas? He demands us to repent of our sin, and he, rem he demands us to repent of our dead work. We've got to be repenting of the good we do sometimes. I didn't miss a day of prayer the whole year long. <laughs> But I sure didn't want to go. <laughs> That's a dead work. Am I helping anybody out there? I know y'all don't like me this much. <laughs> I know y'all don't like me very much this morning, but I'm here to help you. Man, I had to repent when I read some of this stuff. 
Man, Lord, I didn't realize, yeah, I did it again. <laughs> God help me. And that's what he wants to do. That's what he desires to do. Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord he ain't going to quit on us. Hallelujah. He's not going to quit on us. Hallelujah. If you don't quit, he ain't going to quit. My Lord, glory to God. We got to repent from that which is good, too. Maybe we weren't producing it with the right power source. We got to repent of that. Maybe we will, we will power it in. And see, it's not until you go to the backside of the desert till you really, 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 really learn that. Are you with me this morning? I want to I wanna finish this. And how many will give me a few more minutes this morning? John 6.25, let's flip over there to John 6.25, and this is a great example in the Gospel of John of dead works. John 6.25. Great example right here. In John 6, 25, it says, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Wow. Did you see that? In other words, you didn't seek me for the right reason. You were, you were seeking me through a religious experience. You were seeking me on the outside, but your heart wasn't truly in it. That's what God has purged us from this morning. Do you know that? He, he's purged us from that. He, he's given us, and, and he desires that all his people become that living sacrifice that they become that living sacrifice that he so desires to use in this world and that living sacrifice it has to be empowered by him it don't work any other way whoever told you that willpower is how Christianity works lied to you willpower is your first enemy you can't do it you got to understand that and then Jesus would tell him here right after that, he says, look, labor not for the meat which perisheth. Don't labor for that which you see. Labor for that which you can't see. I made a statement at the beginning of the message before we got into the message this morning. I, I wish we didn't even have to have a share -thon. I really wish it was that way. I really wish sometimes I had a million dollars to throw at Crossline TV. So we could get this gospel out. Why? Because I want to store up my treasures on the other side. I want to store up my treasures in heaven where moth and rust. Enough. Listen, when the trump sounds, what's it all going to be? Make a difference. You can't take your money off this planet. You can't take your house or your Corvette with you, your wife. Store up your treasures in heaven, glory to God. I'm trying to give you some wisdom this morning. Store them up on the other side. Because when you get there, it's going to be eternal. And listen, if you're making plans down here, you've missed the whole picture. Because we're, we're, we're just like a spider web, man. We're here one day and gone the next. Before we moved up here, we, we buried a a veteran in the church back home who was 35 years old died at early age went over there and he had seen some things and he had had a, a heart problem and um, I believe it was desert storm he was 35 years old and his mother I believe this was her third child she had lost now I've lost one but I don't know what it feels like to lose three and my heart just broke for her. 
and, and oh, you, you just want to help somebody like that, you know. But I'm here to tell you, we don't know one day from the next how long we're going to be here. That's why it's important to lay it all down at the cross and say, Lord, use me. Use me, Lord. This life I'm living has got to be for him. This life I'm, you're living, it's got to be for him and his will. And it's only going to be brought out by his will and his power. It doesn't, Christianity won't work any other way. Jesus said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth until everlasting life. Everlasting life. Remember when Jesus, he came to some of the Pharisees and he says, you profess me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. That's, that's a dead work. That's something that's dead. It's not living. Well, listen, whatever God anoints comes alive. And he's anointed each and every one. Of, if you're born again, you're anointed. Whether you realize it or not, he's given you. He's made available to you. Let's say it that way. He's made available to you the unction of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us we've been given an unction from the Holy One. And why did he give us that unction? So we could realize and hear truth when we hear it. But the church sadly has become to a place today where it's not even, it's not even hearing one ounce of truth anymore. It's hearing a big fat lie. And God help it, man. I tell you what, I wish we could, I wish we could reach this whole world with Crossline TV and, and how God's using SBN right now around the world. I thank God for all that. I do. But there's so much more ground we need to cover. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Listen, he's going to purge you from dead works, and you need to allow him to do that. God wants to bring us all out of that religious mindset where we just want to be seen of everybody else. Are you with me this morning? Watch what he says. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? that we might work the works of God. Now, this is what we're talking about this morning. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? We know we've got to present our bodies a living sacrifice, right? We know we've got to keep our faith anchored in Calvary, right? But watch what he says. This is, he's talking about a work here. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him in whom he sent. If you want to work to do, believe. You want to go to work? Start believing. Glory. If you want to go to work, I said you start believing. Hallelujah. Because there ain't nothing else you can do. And once you're believing right, you're going to start living right. And once you're believing right, you're going to start working right. Because the work that will be produced will be produced by him. And not by old self. They buried me when I found Jesus. <laughs> I went down into the grave with him. You see, he's become my representative man, do you know? When they buried Christ, they buried the old man. And see, this is why God says, You've been purged. Glory to God, he buried all that stuff. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You want to work, you believe on him in whom he sent. And Jesus said unto them, this is the work. You see, it's a work that you believe on him. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou them? You see, they were thinking with the wrong mind right there. So the world wants to see a sign and a wonder. They want to see somebody fall out on the floor. They want to see somebody roll around barking like a dog. That's dead. That's dead. 
Glory to God. What God gives when we believe in faith in what he did at Calvary is the right work. Right faith, right works. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou them that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written, and he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, I love it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Yeah. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. The bread of God. He said, I am the bread. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the living water. That right there is everything you need to live. And this is what he eats right here. I've said this a million times before, but eating is believing. <laughs> If you're not picking up the Word of God and you're not reading the Word of God, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If it's not going in there, something's going to be... Hmm. Are you with me this morning? This is what the Holy Spirit eats right here. He's got to eat too. He's on the inside. Listen, eating is believing. Eating is believing. He says, I am the living bread. The living bread. The bread of life. Thank God. Thank God that we got a God that wants to purge us from those dead works. Can I tell you, I served the Lord for eight long years in a, in a place of bondage, in, in, in like a cage, man, until God brought me out. I, I couldn't even see what was right. This is why I know how relevant this thing is and how real the message of the cross is. I, I couldn't even see right I couldn't even think right because my mind was so caged with doing 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 I've got to do good and and listen I, I realize now that all that was a big waste of time it's amazing you can live for God that long and and serve him the wrong way I've seen people that have sat on a Baptist church pew for 40 years and they're not have grown one little They've just, they're, they're, you, you become stagnant and you become stale in your spiritual growth when you're not taught properly. You know, the Lord has given us a real burden, my wife and I, to, to reach this world through Crossline Television and to see the church come out of this mess it's in. Because I know we've been given an answer and I, ha I have a confidence that we have the answer. And listen, I'm not the only one that the answer's been given to. Many men down through the years, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I've read behind some men that knew the message of the cross. But the church has just veered off. They've left it. And listen, it's, it's, it's miserable to live like I was back then. And listen, I know that that's where they're at. There's some people, they love God. And, and I got some people that I know back home in Houston, man, they love God. But they're going to, to Joel Osteen and they're going to many churches around there like that. That's not giving them anything but death. And see, that's, listen, when you've, when you've set your place, and they don't know any better, a lot of them. But if they ever get around the truth, if they ever hear the truth spoken and they love the Lord, he's going to give them an unction and he's going to pull them out. He's going to pull them out. Because that's the way it was with me. I didn't know where I was going. I was lost walking in the wilderness and then stumbled across this message. And then all of a sudden, I fought it for a minute.